Toyota is forcing their customers out of their very electric cars they sold them and putting them all back into gas cars while telling the rest of the world that we are not ready for the EVs, which could be because theirs are literally, and I kid you not, having their wheels come off. The State of Charge host Tom Malogny will be here to help me understand the logic behind this, and we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, where I expose the truth behind the electric car headlines. So don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Toyota has been pretty vocal, and by vocal I mean whiny and obnoxious, about the fact that they're not very happy that the world is moving on to the better things like electric cars and away from what's been their bread and butter the hybrids. From random false statements on social media and all the way to lobbying our Congress to slow down the EV adoption. However, it was all going to change when Toyota has finally announced that they were having a baby, a beautiful electric baby their own electric car, the BZ4X. Now, granted, it sounds like a name for a newly discovered planet or a code name for a virus mutation, but we were all happy Toyota was finally going electric along with its sister brand Subaru, rebranding the BZ4X with a much better name, Solterra. Many, including Sandy Munro, have predicted that once Toyota was going to do electric cars, they were going to wow us with it. And Wow, was it underwhelming. With a very average range, subpar charging speed, and underwhelming tech, BZ4X is not exactly a technological marvel. The only reason people will most likely buy it over other EVs will probably be because of their brand recognition or loyalty. But only two months in and after selling less than 3,000 units, Toyota has announced back in June that they were recalling all of them. That's right, including the Subaru Solterra, which luckily has not made it into the hands of any customers just yet. What's wrong, you ask? Is it the batteries catching on fire, the Chevy Bolt style, or, or maybe some of their motors are faulty like in the early days of Tesla? Or maybe they recognized that they forgot to make the other half of the steering wheel? No, no, and maybe. But you see, Toyota has realized that if you drive this car around for a while, the wheels may come off. And I don't mean just figuratively. Toyota has realized that the hub bolts on the wheels can loosen, causing a wheel to detach from the vehicle. Not only it is amazing uh, that Toyota has not learned the righty-tighty lefty-loosey manufacturing trick after making millions and millions of cars every year, they literally don't know how to fix this. That's right, after two months of looking at the wheels and the bolts, Toyota's brightest engineering minds looked at it and said, Hey, uh, that looks like it's broken. Now, can we uh, take lunch now? Yes, they don't know how to fix the problem that I thought was figured out hundreds of years ago in horse carriages, which I guess what BZ4X fleet now actually is. So Toyota now has pulled all of their owners of the BZ4X EVs out of their cars and told them not to drive them at all right now and put them into their gas cars as loaners. Granted, they are paying for their gas, car payments and other related expenses and they're also offering to buy their BZ4X cars back. But, but did you hear what I just said? They're taking people out of their electric cars and putting them back into the gas cars. Ow. But that's not all Toyota did to try to ruin everyone's excitement about electric cars this month. Let me tell you what the guy in charge of their North American sales said the other day. But as outrageous as it was, I wonder if he does have a tiny little point. I'll tell you all about it in just a second, but before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Electrify America, the largest public fast charging network in the US that provides the freedom for all EV drivers to go where they need to go, including coast to coast. With over 800 locations across the US, with more than 3,500 individual DC fast chargers nationwide and growing. Download their app 
app to find hundreds of locations and sign up for their Pass Plus membership for discounted charging sessions. Get started using the link in the description of this video. The executive vice president of sales for Toyota North America, Jack Hollis, who oversaw many Toyotas sold to customers with their wheels firmly attached, has made some statements last week, which I thought Toyota execs wouldn't say anymore since, well, they worked it out in therapy, or so I thought. Jack said that the market isn't ready for EVs, the infrastructure isn't ready, and prices for EVs are still too high. Now, I hate to say it, but he might be right about one thing, but before I get to that, uh, let me shovel the rest of the BS out of the way. See? Didn't pull any muscles this time. Now, obviously, not only people are more interested in EVs than ever before, they are lining up in tens and hundreds of thousands to reserve the new EV models to the point that many of them won't get theirs for years. I don't see people doing that for gas cars nowadays, and I know I've only checked at the Toyota dealerships and there doesn't seem to be a wait time for a Toyota Corolla, though I do have to say that I've heard that the wheels do stay on on that particular model. There is one EV, however, that there isn't much of a demand for, and it is the embarrassment to all electric cars, the Mazda MX-30, which only sold eight units last month, which based on its specs and the price is eight more than it should have. So great job, Mazda sales team. As far as prices are concerned, well, Jack obviously needs a calculator and probably a tutorial on how to use Google. We do have EVs that are way below the average new car sales price in America, like the Chevy Bolt at around $25,000 and Nissan Leaf at under $20,000, though we'll see what happens there next year with the new EV tax credit. There are also now plenty of used electric cars out there that are even more affordable. Plus, let's not forget that owning an electric car is much cheaper due to not having to pay for gas, which I've heard is not very cheap lately, and almost no maintenance, which Jack uh, forgot to calculate into the comparison. And by forgot, of course, I mean didn't want to. But Jack may be right about this one thing, uh, not intentionally, but still. The infrastructure may not be ready just yet. I mean, here in California, we get rolling blackouts, like it's a third world country. Every time it gets a little hot and we have to crank up our air conditioning. And I also had a hard time finding an apartment here in Silicon Valley, one of the most EV-saturated places in the United States, but still, it wasn't easy to find an apartment complex with dedicated charging stations. Now, I know here in California, we just passed a bill banning the sales of all new gas cars by 2035, but it should have also come with a bill that would put our electric utility company, PG&E executives, in jail for gambling with our infrastructure while burning down entire cities. Now, granted, we also just had a huge federal infrastructure bill passed, and of course, the solar and wind energy sources are growing, but we're definitely not ready just yet. For more, we turn to the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel who prefers his electric car's wheels to stay on. What a show off. Uh, here's Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, so we all know why Toyota is asking this question, but it doesn't make the question any less reasonable, which I think it is. So let me ask you, do you think that people are ready for electric cars? So when you say people, you mean everyone, all 320 million people in the country? The answer would be no, but I think a, a, a large swath of that is ready to consider an electric car. And if good ones were made at reasonable prices, there'd be a lot more butts and seats. How about infrastructure? Because, you know, I just moved to a new place here in the middle of Silicon Valley, and I had a hard time finding an apartment or a condo that would have a dedicated charger. So even if people are ready, um, is the infrastructure? So, yeah, there are some areas are 
more challenging than others, to be honest with you. And everywhere you go, we're not completely ready to just transition to electric vehicles. And particularly in the area that you live in, it seems to be one of the, the more difficult places to get that set up. Um, but it's improving. And one of the things I do is I do work with some of the utilities around the country, and they all know this is coming, and they are all pretty much to a company telling me, we can handle this. We just need a little bit of time to, to, to scale up now that we know that we're transitioning to electric vehicles. So, you know, if right, if tomorrow, Alex, 50 million people bought EVs, of course we couldn't handle it. But I think over the course of the next decade, as we gradually scale up to close to 100% electric vehicles, I think the grids are going to be able to handle it. Well, what needs to scale up? Because here in California, we can't, you know, run air conditioning on a hot day without having the blackouts. And this is just for the regular usage. And we don't, we're not really doing anything to build it out to also handle all of the electric cars. Um, I mean, uh, what needs to happen for our utilities companies to actually get going on this? Because it's going to take a while. Well, you know, we are going to need some more capacity. There's a lot of different ways you can go about that. There could be additional power plants. We could utilize renewables more than what we are now. We can integrate more solar into the grid with stationary energy storage. You know, charging electric vehicles are different than most other electrical appliances, say like air conditioners. You need your air conditioner to run all day or your, your house or your business is going to be really hot. With electric vehicles, it's a shiftable load. You don't typically need to charge it at a specific time. And that gives a lot of flexibility in when you charge the vehicle. And we can take advantage of overnight when there's actually excess capacity and charge elect, you know, charge more electric vehicles when there's a lot of capacity and just not charge them during peak hours and uh, offer financial incentives to do that. Asking for a corporation of uh, people to be reasonable, it's a bit of a risky proposition, but I'll, I'll give you that. Now, let's talk about a, a little less reasonable people, which is Toyota. Uh, okay, is there a, a possible explanation of how this whole wheels coming off recall even happened? I mean, this is not an electric car related issue. It's not a motor issue. It's not a battery issue. This is something that I thought the you know horseless carriages solved many moons ago. Yeah, it's really weird that it seems like they almost don't have a way to fix it. So, you know, it's 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 extremely odd. And I think it, it adds to the whole conspiracy thing that, you know, Toyota is purposely building bad electric cars that that have problems because they don't want to sell them. So, you know, it is it's it's very strange. Toyota knows how to build cars, they know how to build wheels, the wheels don't fall off any of their other vehicles. So it's it's a very strange situation we have going on here. So what, what what does it take to get Toyota on board with this? I mean, they obviously have demand for their own electric vehicle, so they see that they can sell them. And yet, you know, every what every other month, me and you have this conversation, and nothing changes. Alex, I, I firmly believe the simple answer, answer is they just don't want to make and sell electric cars, period. That's, that's the easiest way to explain it. They're anti-EV. They've been this way for a long time. I have been covering this whole scene for more than a decade. I've come across product managers in different countries, many people that have interviewed Toyota executives. They're probably the most anti-electric vehicle company out there today of, of all the legacy brands. And it goes to the root cause is profitability, and they make a ton of money on their hybrids. Toyota dominates the world in hybrids. At one point, they were selling over 80% of the worldwide hybrids. That's an amazing percentage and an incredible market share for a specific type of vehicle. I don't know what it is now, but it's still a very high percentage and they don't want to give that up. It's it's their cash cow. It's the golden goose. And they know that electric vehicles are going to crush that. And now they're not going to dominate once we switch to electric vehicles like they are now. So I really think that's the bottom line. They simply know that they won't be the best at making electric vehicles. They'll probably make a very good electric vehicle, but they won't dominate like they do with the hybrids. So they're trying to hold on to that technology as long as possible. But I guess the question is, 
can they make a good electric vehicle? Because we all thought, oh, yeah, of course, once Toyota gets into the electric vehicles, I mean, Sandy Monroe was saying that, oh, it's going to be amazing. And look, that's not amazing at all, even if it had the wheels on it permanently. But it's a very, very subpar electric vehicle. So can they? They can if they want to. That's a simple answer. And you can if you want to see more Tom. Man, I'm so good at segues. Check out his channel. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.